Hi, I am attorney Amanda Schaefer. Welcome to hashtag follow attorney Amanda, where you follow me on my journey to get more likes on social media and ultimately more business. Today, we have our first guest of the series. Um, and I forgot, the one thing I forgot to ask you before we start recording is how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> that is fine. Everyone always asks and then butchers it anyway. <laughs> uh, so hi, I'm Stephanie Bayoki. I'm a director of membership and events at Impact, but I have been doing marketing and social media and events for over a decade now. Um, well, Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, the reason this all came about is I was watching um, one of the episodes that we had of, of hashtag follow attorney Amanda and I talked about in that episode how, you know, I have these, these analytics that I'm looking at every time I post something and I don't know what any of this means and I know like this is like fifth episode where I'm saying, oh, I'll circle back, I'll circle back and then, you know, I, I mean, I do all the more, I don't know, Stephanie, how familiar you are with, with my law firm and what we do with our marketing, but I pretty much make 95 or 96% of the content myself, post it all myself. So I've learned all everything to do myself. Um, it's a lot to do, of course, I'm sure you know. So I was, when I, I was saying this and then I had an idea like, why don't I get connected to somebody who is an expert in the industry that could say, hey, this is what you're doing that's right. This is what you're doing that's wrong. Hopefully more right than wrong. And maybe help me make sense of some of the numbers. Um, I guess that's if these numbers are even important. Um, so your company works with law firm suites, I believe, on their marketing. Mm -hmm, we had, yeah. And Steve Fernari reached out to you guys to see if somebody would be willing to talk to me. And you graciously were. And um, on that note, you know, I, I plug things for all my guests since I've had so many. Um, this book <laughs> I've been reading actually um, as well. This is um, from Stephanie's company. Um, and we're gonna talk a lot about this today. It says, they ask, you answer is the name of the book. Yes, um, and by Marcus Sheridan, who's a good friend of mine, but also someone I've followed for essentially my entire career. Uh, Impact, our company existed before Marcus and before I worked there. And we all kind of came together around the same time I joined the company, right as he was joining and merging his company with ours. Long story short, they ask you answer just works so well. It's a philosophy that I believe in and I have implemented at my past companies. And uh, Bob, our CEO and founder of Impact saw that and said, I want to take this further um, and, and make it more well-known and used by more people because it's, it's what works. And here we are. <laughs> here we are. So um, I think the plan for today is we're going to look at some of our, we'll go to our website, our social media stuff, see, you know, get, get your opinion on some of the stuff. And um, there were some very interesting things in the book when I'm reading that I wanted to talk to you about too, because these are, it's very common sense, very logical. And it's, and I think you'll see that I've, I've attempted to do some of the things the book talks about. Um, so maybe we can help me improve on those things or maybe I'm doing better than I thought or worse than I thought. Um, obviously whatever, whatever, you know, feedback you have for me is more, better than I had this morning. So I, I would love to hear what somebody like you would have to say about these things because I've, I've literally never really had this done. Yeah. So I definitely want to take a look at social. Um, and I think, it, so I haven't looked at any of your social accounts yet. I think it's going to be the most fun to just kind of go through it, see what's there and give my feedback as I see it in the moment. Um, I also... I do social media. I haven't been managing social pages that much right now, aside from a board that I'm a member of uh, that I volunteer to do their social. And so it's interesting because I was thinking this morning, like, oh, I should go make sure I know there's my dog saying hello. I should go make sure that I know the best place to find this or that analytics. And then I thought, you know, I'm not going to do that because things in social media change so often that even if you think you know where something is, you could log in the next day and it's in a different place. It's constantly, constantly changing. So we'll just see if we can find what we need. That's half the fun of, of social media and it's insanity. 
Yeah, we 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 uh, had a virtual meeting last week, and I I quickly saw that a lot of the questions I had I, were I was looking at the wrong wrong things or not in the right way. Um, so that's why I figured from going from like more structured thing to like let's just see, because um, yeah. I I I always love learning new things, and you know I've been I've spent a long time doing a lot of research to get everything up and running. And I've been doing this for a while, but you know, we, we kind of went, you know, went up a little and then you kind of level off and then maybe up a little and level off. So I've never had the full momentum behind it, but we've only gone up, which is good. That is good. So we'll take a look at it. We'll take a look at kind of the language that's being used, um, what tools are being used. Uh, we'll talk about posting on multiple channels, certain dates and times. Uh, but when we chatted uh, originally just to to meet and discuss what this episode would be like, uh, that's how they ask you answer came into our conversation is the first thing I always tell people with social media or even ask them is, okay, you want to know what content's working. If what you're doing is right. Uh, what is your content strategy? How are you coming up with the content that you're posting on social media? Because, uh, unlike what individuals follow each other on social media is like, which is very, very different. Like how I follow my mother-in-law is very different than how you're going to follow a brand or a business and then interact with them. Um, it's not just enough to do the things we think of off the top of our heads. It is better than nothing in a lot of cases. Cause I always tell people like step one is checking your content. Step two is making sure that your page looks like a real business and that you're alive and that you haven't, you know, closed your doors five years ago. And so if your last post is from 2013, that's obviously wrong too. Uh, so having posts is a good start, but having a strategy to make sure that those posts and that content is resonating with the right people. It's using language that is appealing to them. And that is interesting. That's something that they would, um, associate themselves with and see themselves in that language that you're answering the questions they have uh, that is the most important and that is essentially what the concept of they ask you answer is all about it's these 10 core it's actually 10 core concepts um, but they do drive a content strategy that lends itself to posting the right things on social media so that is how we got to talking about it. And I think uh, if anyone is interested in learning about the Ask the Answer and, and the philosophy and the concepts, um, you can certainly read the book. It's a great thing to do, but, and there is an audio book, but if, if you're not a reader or you want a more interactive way to learn about it, um, I actually sent Amanda a link this morning. We have something called Impact Plus, which is our online learning community. You can create a free account and there's essentially a video version. So you can watch a course on what the Ask the Answer is. In these short little videos, you can easily knock it out in, I don't know how long the actual course is. I want to say like an hour and a half. It's not very long. Um, and you'll already be well on your way to what this content strategy would look like. Um, so we talked a little bit about that. One of the biggest things with they ask you answer, one of the most important core concepts is this thing called the big five. And it's what we have seen and has been proven time and time again to be the five things that the five questions that people ask when they're looking to make a purchase or a business decision. And so there's all this fluffy content that we can create on social media. It could be contests, it could be day of the week themed things like workout Wednesday or whatever. But if you're not answering these actual five top five questions that people are looking for, they're not gonna search through your social media and hope that they find that really great thing you posted a month ago to finally answer their question. They're gonna Google it and they're gonna find it somewhere else. And so these five things are, are the most important. And I know Amanda, you've already created content for one of them for sure, which is uh, reviews and, and product, product or service reviews um, are such a big part of this content strategy. It's so important. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Uh, that's essentially, the gist of the ask and answer, all you need to know to get started with um, what we're gonna look at today. So how about we pull up some social accounts? Right, and and just for anyone who's watching, I know um, where this blog is marketed. It is for uh, single attorney, smaller firms, because we're the ones who can't afford the big ad agencies. Um, and so one of the things like my journey to more likes in general is figuring out a way to do it where I can do it myself, or I can, you know, at least for, I can sustain doing it for a while. Um, and just, I think being a little more efficient 
would be incredibly helpful for me just because I yeah. had a little time and I don't think I'm very far off and there's I know a lot of other of my colleagues are in a similar place but it's kind of like taking that next step so hopefully we can get some insight on that um so thank you again for agreeing to do this with me today yeah for sure what site do you want to start on um that is a great question what site do you feel like is maybe working best for you right now <laughs> um i would say probably facebook all right let's take a look at facebook here in front of us so we have your profile up right now um yeah, yeah. so start at the top uh i'm just if i'm a new person maybe i just found you i'm looking at that cover photo um so i can scroll up I can see, okay, Shapiro Lawyers, I might want to follow that hashtag. I don't know yet, but good to know. And based on the Statue of Liberty, I'd assume you're in New York, mm -hmm. if you are correct. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I know the name of the company. So it's pretty straightforward. I like this. It's not um, it's not confusing. It doesn't take away, but it also doesn't overcomplicate things. So I like that. Uh, and then having a book now button is great. Uh, having an, an action for you to take right away is, of course, good. Uh, do you have any questions about like, at a, at a glance, your profile looks really good. You have your phone number, you have your website, like the information's filled in. Do you have any questions about that whole section? No, um, the only thing I would say is with the pin post. I mean, this, I, I've been out since Friday, so I haven't changed this. Yeah. Um, obviously it's, I have, I have to un, just like unpin it. I'm not going to do it right now. Right. But I had, well, we'll get back to some of these in a second, but I want to just go down to a specific video that I had pinned to the top um, until that. And pin, pinned posts are nice. They're definitely a great way to uh, get people some of that most important information. If you do a really great post or it gets a lot of engagement, you're really proud of it. Um, it's great to pin something to the top. Of course, I can't find that. I, I made this like really short video. Oh, here, this one. Here. I love that. Just saying like how to contact us. So this was the one pinned for until then. And then like on the, on the left, you see like here, I had an event. So whenever I have an event coming up, that will be the thing that's pinned. Yeah, that's great. Um, I would absolutely pin this video. And I like that you have the contact information there. Uh, the caption of welcome is great. I would maybe give people a little more context about what they're going to see in the video so they can decide if they want to continue watching or click on mute. Uh, this could easily be a video of you just saying, hi, welcome. I'm Amanda. Nice to meet you. Contact us. Or it could have some really valuable information. And at this point, I don't know. So I would maybe give a little more context in the caption. And if you can, I would upload a, a closed caption file as well. So many people watch social media videos on the train, uh, let's face it, in the bathroom, and they're not gonna turn the sound on, especially in the bathroom at work when you're sharing. I, I actually think it's supposed to have automatic captions. I might've had them turned on. It might, and automatic captions are definitely better than nothing, uh, but with a tool called Rev, R-E-V.com, it is super simple to get a caption file. Um, it's a dollar a minute, so it's very inexpensive for, for one video, it's a dollar. <laughs> and it's way better than auto-generated captions, especially if you have even the slightest accent on some of your words, those auto-generated captions can uh, not go so well. And so Rev gives you the opportunity to, it's usually ready in, I think it's like within 15 minutes. It's very quick for a video this short with a, a video closer to an hour, it can take a couple hours to generate, but you can go through, clean up the captions and download them. And this is one of those really small tips that I think makes a world of difference. Um, when you're uploading captions on Facebook specifically, they need to be not only in the caption file name, they need to be in English, which we know <laughs> uh, the file name has English in it. On Facebook, you have to specify that it's US English, at least if you're in the US, uh, not UK English. And so this is a little tip that uh, it can feel complex now, but once you do it once, it's second nature. You download your captions file from Rev, and it'll say English dot, and then the file name. All you have to do is add underscore US right before the file name, and it, it works perfectly. Otherwise you upload that uh, file, caption file to Facebook, and it's gonna say, what type of English is it? This caption didn't work, and people get really frustrated, like, why didn't that work? Uh, and it can make such a world of difference because the engagement on your video, the watch time on your video can go up with people don't have to unmute it or they can see what you're saying in the captions and already be excited to 
keep watching it. Uh, that being said, on your video, which is great, you have that contact information at the bottom, the captions would likely cover that up. And so you may want to move the contact information up to the top bar uh, so that you can have your captions there as well. That makes sense. So, so let's pick a post that has- Let me go back to the beginning because I, yeah. I part of um, what I want to look at while we scroll down is something that I, I always bothers me that you'll see very shortly, there's going to be certain posts that are, are uh, repetitive. Like okay. double, it looks like they're double posted and, but some have likes or engagement and, and I'm not sure if I should, because if you delete one, you lose all that. Mm -hmm. but I never know what to do with that when those things happen. Um, do you want me, you want me to scroll and you stop? Yeah, or, let, let's see if you can point one out to me. Um, well, right here, this is a, a series I do every Friday. Cool. It's Love the series. Um, I, I did it a few years ago. I went through over a hundred flags, but that was all on our website blog. We weren't really on Facebook as much. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of restarted it again from the beginning. And then on Monday, I post the, the name of the country and like a fun fact about the country. That's cool. I would follow that. I was doing foreign dog Friday for a while. <laughs> I like that too. So it was a lot less countries though. Yeah. That was the problem. Um, this is actually, this is hashtag follow attorney Amanda. Um, I always repost it on our website. Um, and then, so here, here's an example of it being posted. This, I guess I posted it to a playlist. So it posted twice. Mm -hmm. Is it, am I better off just like getting rid of one of these? Interesting. So I was curious how you were going to use double posts, because if you're doing something like posting on Instagram and having it auto post to your Facebook and then going and posting to Facebook, that's typically a way that people get a lot of those duplicate posts. Uh, this is not that. Um, sometimes Facebook loves to do this thing where every little action you do should be part of your newsfeed. And that's not always the case. So yeah, it is on us to clean them up a little bit. Um, if you were losing a post with 20, 30 likes or specifically comments, um, then I would be more concerned. But the sooner you can get to a post where it only has a couple of likes, it's certainly worth cleaning it up. So uh, specifically the one here where you added it to a playlist, the video itself is always there. This is what people, what Facebook wants people to know is now part of your playlist, follow attorney Amanda, but they could see the video either way. So what I would do is uh, click the three dots on the second post, the one that's already paused, that one, yep. And then if you click delete post, it'll tell you, or it should, uh, well, I'm sure you want to delete this post. It's not going to delete your video. It's just deleting the, the post about the fact that it was added to the playlist. So I would absolutely delete that because it's just a couple of likes. You'll be fine. Um, I'm looking at your, your actual video in the original post, and there's a link in there. What does that link go to? This link? Yes. Uh, the I can't quite quite stop scrolling. So it says learn more about how I utilize Canva in my practice. And then this link is a I use Bitly to shorten the link. And if I click on this, I go to the law firm suites website where the actual ori original post was put. Okay, so you go to a post about how you use Canva. I I it's the same. No, it's the same. Let's go ahead and click on it. Let's take a look. Okay, so it is it is the actual lesson. Um, can you go back to your original post for a second? Okay, so this is such a little thing, but when you say learn more about how I utilize Canva in my practice period, I would actually put a colon so that people know that that link is where they're gonna go to learn how. Uh, yes, the video, of course, is about that too. But even I was looking at this going, is that link going to go where I think it is? And because it's a bit.ly, I'm not even sure it's your website. Having a shorter link can look a little cleaner sometimes and some social network shorten links on their own. But with a bit.ly like that, I can't see within the URL, oh, I'm going to go to the Shapiro website. I'm going to go to a trusted website. Uh, it even got me considering for a minute if I would click that. So I would definitely add a colon and maybe not shorten the link. And then I would add to your caption something like, maybe hit enter and say something like, follow, hashtag follow attorney Amanda, or check out our hashtag follow attorney Amanda playlist and link to it. 
uh, for more videos like this, because if you're going to delete that additional post when it gets added to the playlist, it does clean it up. It makes it not repetitive, but it does also take away the reminder for people that there's a playlist with more content like this that they can subscribe to if they want to watch more of it. Um, so I would maybe add that in your post as well. That makes and sense. then because even if you have the hashtag there, it's not a link to the playlist itself. Right. Let's take a look at engagement on this really quickly, if that's okay with you. Uh, so yeah, we have 46 people reached, five engagements, and it has two likes. Click on any one of those things. Yep. And I'll bring up this little, oh, hello, Facebook. Yeah, Facebook and me, they're not always getting along. Does it do this to you a lot? It does all sorts of stuff to me. Interesting. I, it's a, it is honest. There are some days where I try to share a post and it'll like only pull um, the cover page, the cover page image. So like people think I'm posting like a, just a, a, a random advertisement instead of the post. Ah, yes. So is that because you're linking to a page on your website? Um, or rather, are you trying to link to a page on your website? I, it's happened to me when I've tried to just share a post with a group. With a group. Yeah, so a lot of times that's going to pull whatever image is the default preview image in a link. And so if there's a link in your post, like the one you have in this video, a lot of times Facebook will say, oh, there's an image attached to this post. We should be helpful and pull that in. And if your website isn't set up to have a featured image meant for social media, and there is a little bit of code behind that that a developer can sometimes help with if it's a, a problem, if it's happening a lot, uh, that can help make sure that the right image is pulled. Because sometimes the way a website is built, it's going to default to like your logo or something, which looks like crap, of course. Yeah, and I, yeah, it's driven me crazy. I mean, they, there's... They're also always changing like little things about how you can share posts or, yep. you know, and like. And the easiest way out. Wow. Okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to tackle this in just a second. I don't know why it's pulling it up like yeah. this. I'd assume it's something to do with your screen size, but it. No, my screen size is huge. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's. Were you zoomed in just now though? What? Were you zoomed in just now as we were looking at it? Oh, interesting. Can you try again to click like engagements? So weird. Okay. Well, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, another thing though, is when you do want to change, when you do want to share a post. If you ever have an issue with the wrong image coming through, um, I usually click share. And then as I'm editing the post before I share it, uh, or if you copy the link, go to a group, paste it, I will delete the link that's in the post and just copy it to my clip clipboard or put it on a uh, virtual sticky note, get the rest of the post the way I want it, upload the image I want. Sometimes it's even taking a screenshot of the old post, as long as you have the image you want, and then adding the link in at the very last item, because otherwise it'll try to pull from the link. But if there's already an image or a video there, it won't pull anything from the link. So that might help you. Um, so for now, let's go from the left sidebar and click the insights, which is the third thing from the bottom. Now, this is, of course, a little bit harder to get to a specific post, uh, but it is going to hopefully save us from having that messed up screen view, which we don't want. Uh, so even just at a glance here, we can see uh, how many people are getting being reached by some of your posts. I mean, you're over 6,000. That's pretty, pretty good. You don't have a frame of reference here at this point, but that's still, anyone can tell you 6,000 people is a decent number of people. Um, let's take a look at, let me see. And this is one of those moments too, where I'm like, all right, where did they move it to this time? Um, scroll down a bit, should show, there we go, your top five most recent posts. Um, so if you click see all posts at the bottom of that five most recent section, we'll be able to see everything and we can find the video you want. Um, this is one of, actually one of my favorite graphs to look at. Um, you can see at a glance from the past week, how people are engaging with your content on certain days of the week and what time of day they're engaging. Uh, this is really, really interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a page or an account with such consistent engagement on the days of the week. Um, I can just, at the very top, you're looking Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's all 1200 and change. That's very interesting to me. I've never seen something that consistent. And I don't know if that's because you have a loyal fan base who's always liking your posts, or if you 
post consistently every single day. Uh, do you? No. Interesting. I, I, I had like a two month time period where I was very close to that, like mm -hmm. every day, but it just became too much. So like when I do my, like I, mo most of the graphic posts I do in the morning mm -hmm. because I try to just get them done with. And then the videos, I, like I said, most of the videos are, are live. So I'm either doing them between like noon and 3 p.m. whenever I have time during the day. And that'll mm -hmm. be like up to 10 minutes. And then the only other ones are the ones we schedule in advance. And those are always 9 p.m. at night. Gotcha. It's interesting because, so this graph at the top with the blocks and then the kind of little line graph uh, shows when, when your fans are online. Can you click on the second one where it says post types? So this is going to tell you a little bit about uh, the success of your photo posts versus your links versus your videos versus the statuses. So it looks like right now, clearly the most engagement is coming from your photo posts. Now, like we said, photos are a little more work. You have to uh, create them for different sizes for different social networks. But if we're just looking at Facebook, photos look to be pretty successful here. Videos, interesting, it's probably because they're mostly done live and then they kind of disappear. I wonder what it would be like if you uploaded a video. I wonder what it would be like if your videos had captions, if your uh, post copy with the video were more descriptive. But I'm guessing a lot of the photo ones, I mean, even just looking at the posts about the international flags, that's very interesting. And so I could see people being engaged with that. Um, what's really interesting here is you can see on the average engagement side of this graph, uh, where you have average reach, which is the number of people seeing it, and then engagement, which is doing something with the post. Blue is people who've clicked the post, and red, or whatever that color is, is uh, people who've reacted, so like, love, laugh, all those little reactions, uh, who've commented on it or who've shared it. And that's interesting to me because that means that way more people have clicked something in your post, whether it's a link back to your website or uh, click to your profile. And clicks are great. Clicks are a fantastic way to get people who are engaged with you on social media to come on over to your website and take the next step and learn more. Um, so that makes me want to say, you'll want to make sure you have a page on your website that you're sending people to from social media or whatever the page that you're sending people to, even if it's your article about how to use Canva, um, that that is, that has something, a specific next step for people. So at the end of it, are you asking them to contact you? Are you asking them to follow your vlog on YouTube? Are you asking them to do something to continue this relationship? Because clearly they got enough value out of it to click through. Um, and then you could be looking on your website of the people who, let's say you had a form on the website, even to subscribe to your emails or to get contacted by you. Uh, that's a great way for you to see, are the people who are following me or who are reaching out to me from this, the right people? Because if consistently the people who find your website through, let's just say Google search are becoming clients and the people who find your website through social media aren't, but they're always liking your posts, that's great. They may find your post super interesting, but that doesn't do you any good in terms of getting leads, right? That's very right. Uh, I, 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 I think with the, a lot of times with the photos, what I try to do is, I mean, the videos too, They'll either be the learn more button on the bottom or call us or something because we try to make it as easy as possible for people to contact us. Yeah, for sure. Contact is great. Contact is a great uh, next step for people. So let's go down a little, just a little bit and look at individual posts. Um, so just at a glance here, we can see uh, about halfway down, there's one with a big orange bar and a big blue engagement bar, which means that if you go up to the orange one above that, there you go. Yep. Uh, that had a lot of clicks, which is great. It had definitely a good amount of the engagement was paid, which shows that if you did a boost on this, a lot of the views came from the fact that you boosted it. So you can tell that at a glance, at least that was it worked, so to speak. We don't know who those people are that viewed it or how valuable they were. Um, and then the one you just hovered over is really interesting because you did a little bit of a boost, but you got a really, really strong uh, organic engagement and reaction to this um, and reach on this. And that could be from uh, if you, sometimes you tag someone 
they may, it may be seen on their profile by their followers. Uh, if you tag someone who shares it, they share it, they might extend the reach of the post. Let's take a look at this post. I do these every Tuesday. Okay. And uh, so people would probably share tips. I mean, that makes sense that people would want to share tips. It's like, this is, it has nine shares, which is great. Uh, well, nine shares on the, that were, the likes came from. So clearly tips is something that people are not only engaging with you on, but they're feeling are valuable enough to share with their followers, which is a great way to extend your reach. Yeah, I, like I said, these I do every Tuesday. Um, I do boost them. A like, I don't spend much. I mean, it adds up, obviously. Yeah. But, um, I, those, like, I'm in certain Facebook groups where I, most of the shares are made. So I'm sharing mm -hmm. them to these groups where I know people will find them useful. Gotcha. Uh, so that being said, we are almost at the end of our time and going to have to wrap up. And as you can see, we've only gotten through part of one social channel, uh, which shows like how much effort and energy and time goes into social media, which is crazy, especially for something that is sometimes only seen by a handful of people. It's it's frustrating. It's exhasting. I get it. Um, that's why I love the Ask Answer so much is it's the perfect, it is the concepts of the perfect way to get more out of your content while it's being seen by other people. And so I, I think everything you've created here is really great. And I love the idea of having it on your website, using it in your emails. If someone contacts you to set up a, a meeting, maybe sending them something in advance that answers those common questions. Um, it can absolutely live on social media and that's great. And people can see it. I for sure. Um, well, yeah. So thank you so much. Um, I put the link to the impact classes on when Megan posts this video, I'll have, I'll make sure she has that and okay. um, a link to buy the book as well. So we cool. cover all bases here. Um, so yeah, thank you again. And, you know, check back um, a future episode of Hashtag Follow Attorney Amanda. We'll hopefully be talking to either Stephanie again or more experts to try to figure out what's going on with all the social media and, and kind of judge how I'm doing. It sounds like I'm at least, uh, going in a direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm going forward. So that's Absolutely. Good, um, which makes me very happy. I mean, I can tell by the, um, the phone, not the phone ringing itself. That's not a good gauge. The, the uh, schedule filling up. Yeah. And we've had usually summers are slow time and it has not been slow. So that's always good, but it helps to definitely hear some of these things from someone who knows what they're talking about as opposed to me who just makes it up as I go along. <laughs> well, for making it up as you go along, I think you've been doing pretty well. I like the content in the posts and a few tweaks, and I think you'll be moving forward even faster. Awesome. Well, we'll, we'll try to do that and see if we can uh, fill people in next time on, on how some of those tweaks have helped us or not helped us, but I have a good feeling. Sounds good. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Have a good day.